This guy complained non-stop that he didn't get any Injustice 2 bait. And he told us that was the only reason he wasn't top the first year. Okay. And now, it doesn't get any earlier than this. He's, He's right literally there. on stage. It's yeah. the third set of competitive MK11. Yeah. So my point here is he's up against an Evolution champion and an MKX top eight finalist. Yeah. Tweety, I don't know if he can hear he has headphones on. You have to win this. You <laughs> wow. told us. You told us you would be top if you could play early. This is it. You are not giving him an out, huh? No, there is no out. He has to win this. But you know what I love about Tweety? He's thinking, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't blow up Tweety for his confidence because he just owns it. For sure, yeah, and he's made that, he's made it clear that he can back that up. Yeah, oh yeah. I yeah. mean, there's, no, in, in MKX and Injustice 2, the end of those games, there's no question he was one of the best in the world. Yeah. And this is his first opportunity to be top early in the game's life, which is so important. There's, you know, you always want to be good early on and not have that, oh, you know, I came in late, I'm a, as he would say, necro. Uh -huh. So he is hungry. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we have Dragon. Unquestionably the, one of the best Injustice 2 players. The dude won EVO. For sure. But he took a break. And like it or not, I think Dragon's a great guy and an immensely talented player. If you step away, you step away. You have to hold that. And That's now true. he's back. So this is a high pressure situation for both these guys. They have a lot to prove right now. Now both of these players have liked to zone in the past, and you might think it's strange to see Baraka for somebody like Tweety. But actually, that fireball is legit. It's a mid, and it recovers very fast. Baraka, you know, a lot of people have this idea that he's the savage, that he doesn't know what's, like he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. No, he understands zoning. He's been he's been in 2D fighting games for 25 years now. That's and he true. has come prepared. Oh. Wow. That did hella. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, and because that, that enhance move is just tied to the stamina bar, you can use that pretty regularly. You it's, don't need meter in a traditional sense for that. Right, and you can just see there, he does two of them, and he's already built half a bar for another one. It's very, very strong. Yeah. Now, the nice thing about Scarlet's tongue, though, she actually gets the knockdown. So if right. she can get the life loop, she definitely has the zoning advantage. Okay, trading it up, but you know what? Tweety's got more life. Right. Oh, good jump in. Yeah, read it. Now they're finally back. up close, and oh, excellent throw tag. You can see Baraka's 4-4 four, four there is big, big range. Oh, Chop Chop. Chop Chop has never been punished ever in 30 years. Everyone just talks about how they punish it, then they don't actually okay. punish it. Okay, you can enhance that twice. He enhanced it twice for both bars. Now, Dragon just used his Fatal Blow, even though he might lose this round. So that could be an interesting gamble. Now, is Tweety going to want to use his to close this out, or just try to beat Dragon? If he can. Well, it doesn't even, he he doesn't doesn't even need it. it. Ooh. Oh, that is the grossest thing. That's if tough. you look closely, the skin is wiggling. Oh, all right. I like how the brain's pulsating. Yeah, it's still there. It's definitely still moving. It's all right. Dragon doesn't think when he plays. <laughs> I think he heard me and just kind of front like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need that it's brain. All right. I, I, yeah, I did not. It's fine. I just jump. So yeah, those fireballs out of Tweety, that really made a huge difference in the way that that first game went. Yeah, I mean, Tweety had the life lead pretty much the whole time, and, and Dragon, oh, and that's speaking wow. of life lead. Early, look at that damage. I really like how much Tweety's been using throws, too. Throws are always great in uh, MK games. And now, smart, Tweety immediately just goes for the zoning, and, and Dragon's gonna have a hard time because of the life lead. Dragon's smartly just going in now. Nope. Overhead on the end of that? Yep. Fatal Blow's already ready, and Tweety, yeah, spending twice. Anti- He was ready for Very it! Down two's there. Tweety. I think this is Tweety basically saying, you need to go back on your break, man. You need to get out of here. Yeah. Is Dragon gonna put up with that, or is he gonna wake up here? Caught in the corner. Oh, he kept it going? He kept it going! It's, it never ended! <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, there we go. Dragon's gonna get something going. Oh, nope. 
And now Tweety's gonna go back to zoning Baraka. Yeah, expected the jump perfectly. This is somebody who's been playing the Fireball and anti game for a while. I mean, and with his Starfire was just amazing. Yeah. That was her wheelhouse. A little bit of harassment, big jump boots. And again, this is all Tweety. Dragon's in big trouble. Yeah, you can see Dragon's having a really hard time dealing with that Blade Spark being a mid. Yeah. And this is cheap, real fast, and now Dragon's gonna have to adjust to that if it's just one more game. Look, that's how it is when you have been playing the game for two hours and right. you try to decide who's the best. What? Yeah. It's, it's not long-term strats. It's what did I find that's wild today. Today, and, and, and Dragon is very good at adapting, very good at, Dragon's not nervous right now. He's thinking, you know, yeah. what the hell am I gonna do yeah. about Looking for solutions on right. yeah, for sure. The only problem for Dragon is time. Now he's gonna have the life lead. Mm -hmm. Oh, the tongue. Might All try right. going in a little bit more. Now we're going to see Tweety's going to have a hard time zoning now because he's so low on life. Well, maybe not for long. Yeah. Okay, oh, perfect jump timing. Jump in. Oh, he's got okay. the combo. Data blow's ready, though. You see Dragon instantly just blocking a lot. Doesn't want to take a risk on that. Yeah, very, very smart. Oh, Trying to get no back in, punch. Tweety. Now Chainsaw's in play. Chainsaw Interactable, you can use it from full screen and you throw it or up close and it goes into a crushing blow. Yeah, I really like this change from Dragon. There's a lot more pressure for him. Right. Is that an overhead? Uh, the tongue? The tongue is not. No, okay. the tongue okay. is a mid. However, it, it is very, very good on block. It's a great zoning tool. Awesome hitbox on the spark because it went forward. I really like Tweety going for the throw because Brock is going to kick her full screen, and now mm -hmm. with his lead, he can go back to his, his wheelhouse here. Mm -hmm. This is where he wants to be. Walking up, maybe looking for a jump. Nothing came. Oh, big punish. Oh, hey, one question I have. Can, can you combo out of, like, crouching non-string buttons? Like a down one special canceled into a tongue? Yeah. Yes, that will combo. Okay, okay. Oh my god, he kept it going still. And Tweety's on set point here. He's it's after his snack. Up. It's kind of rude of him to litter. This is the fight club here. They're getting some space. But you know, I often think the Dragon oh, nice. wants that space. It's just that in this matchup, it hasn't been working out. Right. Yeah, I, I think Dragon definitely seemed okay. to have focused on zoning with Scarlet and has been caught off guard by how good Baraka's zoning is. Exactly, yeah. But oh, okay. Oh, there's the Blood Ball. Does that give you a combo opportunity? It does close? not. It's just a lot of hit advantage. Okay. The variation he chose to use, though, he can actually make the blood ball slow or fast by amplifying. So he could put on a slow blood ball and kind of oh. follow behind it, or mix behind it, or mix up the speed. Man, something about the hand at the, the start of that thing. Part. Oh my god, the hand part's the worst. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> gruesome. It just makes it so real that you're like, wait, stop. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay, out of the air. Dragon has Fatal Blow. He we'll does. see if he wants to go for it. Oh, he tried to punish it and got caught off. Is it going to do enough? It's not. But very close. Any anti-air? He waited. Oh, oh, he had it. He had it. Oh, Dragon's big panicking. Bet. Oh, he got jump a big jump was perfect. Be it. And Dragon is still alive. Oh, let him barely. see it. Yeah, let him see it. There it is. That could not have been closer for Dragon. Not, we were just talking about adaptation. All he's got to do is two more games like this. Yeah, there was definitely more offense. So like we said, these are two of the best in the world and they're gonna add, they're gonna adapt on the fly. Right. They're gonna change. Now we'll we'll have to see, does Tweety have anything beyond that mid-range and throws? Mm -hmm. This will be our first competitive uh, getting them out of two, maybe. And they're both just going at. Is that a crushing blow, or is it just animated to zoom in? That is a crushing blow. Okay. That is if, if she does the move as a punish or a counter, she'll get it. Okay. I see, yeah, not an overhead, but yeah. just super useful in very, space very control. Useful. There's also a full, a very far version, a low, uh, close, medium, and far, so it's great. Okay. It's also great to end block screens since she's pushed back so far. Oh, oh, it is. That is actually an overhead. Oh, it is. Wow. Yeah. Ah, it's still in there. Oh my god. Her hand is still attached. I absolutely love the flag part. 
My favorite thing about the flag, if you can listen, is there's a war drum or a war horn every time he puts it down. Yeah. I like to imagine he has a Tarkatan like war band got like a hype man right in the <laughs> foreground that's oh. like Mad Max Fury Road that dude that's just playing guitar like that's his job Baraka has one of those guys one of his variation moves he can choose he actually has different flag moves like you can plant it or actually hit it with you and mm -hmm. you could see that in Ed's gameplay breakdown earlier yeah I was trying that out that gives extra damage yes. onto buttons if he's near the flag you can really radically change your character with the variation system. There are all kind of wacky moves, like... Oh, you, you mentioned it earlier, but Baraka also has a command grab variation. Yes, Baraka has a mid-screen command grab where he actually jumps and leaps at you. And he can choose to equip that if he wants. Scarlet has several different debuff and buff moves. She has... She can make it rain blood from the sky, and if she's standing in it, she gets a damage boost. There's all kind of ch variation moves you can choose from. There you go. Oh, come on, man. Okay. And Tweety's going to take it. It was a pretty close set towards the end. It was, and like we were talking about, we did start to see some adaptation, but it just wasn't enough. <laughs> okay, I think she's dead, yeah. Oh, she's definitely dead. <laughs> she's gone. We have a mild pop-off from Tweety. Yeah, like you were mentioning before, you know, he and Dragon have had different paths. Dragon hasn't been playing quite as much in the last half year, year. Uh, Tweety, the opposite. I mean, he's been right. grinding, he, and he did fantastically in Injustice as a result. But the wonderful thing about the tournament scene is it is there is always a next day, and, and Dragon is a pro. He is back. That means he is, he is all in. Mm -hmm. I, I expect him to do really well this year. No doubt. I think for both of them, yeah. Right. Uh, we have a replay. Let's go back and check it out. Yeah, you're right. Her face was wriggling. I saw it. Yeah, it's very, very gross. Every time I see it, it's kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's reaction. Yeah, that was definitely my strange. reaction the first time I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of tough. Still going on back there. But very, very cool again to see that this character, Baraka, plays maybe in a way that many didn't expect. I didn't expect it. I thought, like you were saying, I thought he'd be more pressure heavy, and I guess maybe he has that variation, right. but this was not what we saw here. Yeah, and, and you can um, you can make Sub-Zero very, very defensive if you want, or you can make him like a mix-up character. Right, you well, can... let's go back up to the stage and see what's going on. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, folks. Without further ado, let's introduce our first player from Montreal, representative Panda Global Hayate. It's a battle for Canada, my friends. So good to see you. How pumped are you for Mortal Kombat 11? Um, I'm really pumped to come here and try the game, experience what it's like to play it, and uh, I'm having a great time, and that's what's up. All right, man. Excited to see your game played. Go ahead and take a seat. Let's introduce your opponent, hailing from Toronto, Beast Coast Honey Bee. Welcome, my friend. What do you plan to bring to this game, being such a huge Mortal Kombat fan? Uh, well, in the, the last game, I was known for playing Devora a lot. Since she's not here right now, I'm going to use Baraka and chop, chop, chop to victory. <laughs> chop, chop, chop it is. Go ahead and grab your seat. We're going to give you a sec to get ready on the button checks as they choose their character. These two professional players have been competing in the Mortal Kombat scene for quite some time. We're going to give them a second just to check out and log in and get ready for our first matchup. In the character selection screen right now, there is Baraka, who we saw earlier today, featured in that beautiful presentation from Ed Boon. And you can see the menu right now, all of the different options these pro players go through to make sure they lock in what they need to be their best. And it looks like they're both ready. We're waiting for Hayate for his last button check here. Hayate ready? Honeybee ready? Gentlemen, let's get this match started to the commentators. 
hyped. Here we go. I am super hyped. Scorpion is the exact character I predicted Hayate would play. Okay. It makes perfect sense, because what do you think of Hayate? Crazy showmanship and mobility. Yeah, excellent footsies as well, and I've already seen some good tools from Scorpion in that. Yeah, one of the big things about this game is most of the characters use weapons, and they definitely use them well. Like, Scorpion now uses his sword more than he ever has, and he has excellent range. He's kind of been reimagined as uh, a mid-range combat. So let's talk a little bit about how the game differs from MKX. What, what are some things to look for right off the bat? One of the big things to look out for is the new meter system. There's now a, two stamina bars. There's defensive and offensive. And offense is what you use to do amplify your moves. Defense is what you use to do wake up attacks or wake up rolls or our new breakaway mechanic. And we have our first crushing blow. That's another one of the new mechanics. Okay. There are certain moves, five or six per character, where they have different properties. For example, doing the move three times in a row or countering a high attack or punishing a move, and you will get that x-ray effect, and they do a ton of damage. damage. Oh, man. Eye-popping damage, mind-blowing damage. And they also can have properties like they can pop you up or restand you. They are significantly better versions of those moves when you get the crushing blow effect. So that meter, just to be clear, it just comes back on a timer? It's Correct. Not, not related to anything There's else? There's no longer meter building by doing moves or taking chip damage. There, it's on a timer. You can almost think of it like a cooldown. Okay. And it is a very fast cooldown uh, if you've only used one bar, so you definitely should feel welcome to use your Amplified moves a lot, but if you have none right now, you can see he could not do this Amplified Teleport. Right. Oh, you can see Baraka jumping that back one. Very smart. I started to read that uh, Teleport, I think, right there. But you can see, is that back one, I think you told me? Yes, back one is the sword move. Yeah, it, incredible button right there. Yeah, it's... A lot of the characters play their best at that kind of mid range. Oh, here we go. Let's see. I got to tell you guys, I, I don't know if you could hear that in the way that I could, but I have big old headphones on my ears right now, and each one of those little blood driplets, I feel like, was in my head. Our audio department does an amazing job of making something gross, like 10 times gross. <laughs> it was the definitely gross. Is so nasty. Yeah. So uh, talk to me a little bit about movement in this game. Seems like run is not there. Run is completely gone. Instead, we, we really wanted to make walking one of the key things, a very kind of old school 2D fighter feel. You can actually dash, but the dashes don't really go that far, and they have a lot of recovery, so they're mostly used to, like, maybe when you hit a Sub-Zero Freeze to get there quickly, or if you want to take the risk, because they have a lot of recovery. Walking is really the name of the game, in my opinion. You can cancel a dash with a block or an attack if you want, reminiscent of MK9, but yeah. it's not nearly as effective as it was back then, where you would kind of dash block rapidly to get in. You really have to think to get in, I see. which then goes with what I'm saying about the normals having so much range. So the normals have a lot of range at mid-range, and everyone's using their weapons, but the walking is really strong, so you can kind of walk in and out of that range easier. Okay. Yeah, it seems like already from about this range they can play footsies. It's exactly. pretty cool. Yeah, Baraka uses his blades with his back too. And yeah, that back two too. overhead is huge. Half Which, screen. Right. And one of the things we wanted to do is we definitely wanted to bring back the really exciting offense of MKX, but we've looked at the overheads and the lows and they have a lot more risk reward factor to them. Like Baraka does have a it's exactly what you said, it's like almost a half screen overhead. Yeah. But he's not gonna get a combo. Right, right. Or Scorpion does have a low that can combo, but his overhead just slaps you down. Okay. So it's gonna be a lot rarer to see like the really, really deadly mix-ups there. So we just saw a little short hop out of Scorpion. What's going on there? Well short hop is a new mechanic where you tap up and it will crush any low attack or a throw, and then every character has attacks they can do out of it. They can either do a punch or a kick, and they're universal overheads that will splat you. So for example, if you predict that Barack is gonna try to throw you, you can do a short hop to actually go over the throw. From Las Vegas, Noble Rewind! Rewind, we've seen your career explode these last few years with NetherRealm Games. Are you prepared to continue going up and up and up in Mortal Kombat 11? I expect myself to rise to the top, number one. Number one, take a seat. Let's get ready to bring out your opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, from New York, the current reigning champion of NetherRealm titles, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox! Sonic, 
You're the fan favorite, the people's champion, and the reigning champion. Are you prepared to defend your title in Mortal Kombat 11? Hell yeah, what the hell? <laughs> hell yeah, take a seat. Let's get started, great to see you. And as always, folks, these two players will sit down, go through the button checks, and confirm they are good to go to maximize their potential with these characters. Back in MKX days at the Fatal 8, Sonic Fox wowed everybody. With Aaron Black, we've seen Rewind use a number of different characters throughout his career, but this could be anybody's game in our final pro exhibition match. Let's see who they're gonna pick as they go through the button checks. And as you'll notice on the menu, you have these intricate menu options to customize your play, including release check, alternate control, and other options that you'll be familiar with from other NetherRealm titles. Sonya Blade looks to be the selection from Sonic Fox. And Raiden from Rewind. Rewind, are you ready? He's ready, Sonic Fox is ready. Let's get this final match started to the commentators. David? I, David, I have a scorching hot take. Okay. You heard it here first. Okay. And this may be bold, and I might get blown up for it, but I'm gonna do it, because I'm all about hot takes. Okay. You are a student of the history of uh, fighting games, correct? Here's my statement. I okay. want your answer. Okay. Sonic Fox is the most talented player to ever pick up a pad over Tokido and Daigo. Raw, I'm not saying length of time playing results, just raw talent. Well, give me, if, give if me a few more years. Give me a few more years and I'll let you know the answer to that. But right now, yeah, he's on the very, very short list of, of all time. Absolutely already on that list. That said, if there is anyone that can beat this guy in another own game, it is his close friend Rewind. Yeah, they play a lot, for These sure. These guys play constantly. Yeah. They were the grand finals of the Injustice 2 Pro Series grand finals. Now, Rewind playing Raiden is actually no surprise. That's who he played in MKX. And he wasn't as well known. He really blew up in Injustice 2. But MKX has had a resurgence. He's been bodying people with Displacer Raiden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, this character seems a little bit different. It seems maybe a little bit more like Zoning and Footsie's character. I would definitely describe him as a Zoning or like Footsie character for sure. Yo, he sure. got it. This man is already pressing buttons between strings. For real, he just did that. And this actually might kill. Really? Oh, okay. very, very close. Now, Rewind is nutty enough to go for his crushing blow. Oh, wow! He, and there you see. That was fast. Now, that lightning movie has a close, medium, and far version of that. Okay. He also has excellent range with his normals. Yeah, even from this range, he can attack. Yeah, he, has, he uses his staff in a lot of normals, and his, his punches and kicks have really good... His back one, too. Oh. Wow. Was that maybe a wrong throw tech? Is that why there was a yes. crushing blow? Okay. That makes sense. Okay, you got him correctly that time. Now, Sony is a good pick for Sonic Fox. She, unlike a lot of characters, she doesn't use a weapon, so her range is some of the, the shortest in this version of the game, but she makes up for it with really, really good mix-ups. She has, like, a very long move list, and she has a lot of overhead and low mix-ups. They're mm -hmm. all on safe, but she makes you guess constantly. Like, her back one, two there, the second hits an overhead, and then she has a low to complement it, so... She's very much a high-risk, high-reward mix-up character, which and Sonic's so good at predicting how you're going to block sure. and mixing you up. It's, it's, it's a great character for him. That definitely makes sense to me. Unfortunately for Sonic, he's having a lot of trouble actually getting going because Raiden is so good in the mid-range. Raiden is also a character where the custom character variation really sets him apart. He, he has his classic moves you'd expect, the teleport, the, the Superman, but he has a lot of light gear. It's very wacky moves. He actually has a stance where he starts hovering in the air. We showed it to you, and he has like yeah. four different moves out of it. Yeah. He's got a move that's, uh, he actually puts his staff into the ground and it's planted, and then he can do his lightning moves to bounce off of it. A lot of kind of trap or setup moves if, if he chooses to use those. Now, at the end of the last round when he was going for the chip out kill, was there anything that Sonic could have done? Is there like a push block or is there anything in that sense? There is the flawless block where chip is dramatically reduced and you get uh. a reversal. So that's kind of how you would want to push block in this game. And so it's very high skill uh, survivability. If you block one hit of a string and the next hit of the string, do you have to continue to input the... You do not. You can hold block and you'll still get the reduced chip thing. So if, you, if you're good enough to get it going, you know, you can survive stuff you'd normally be killed by. What if you block the first hit of a string regularly? Can you then do the special timing block for the second hit of it? 
Uh, it, it depends on how big the gap is in the string. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head what the frame, you know. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. the nerds can look into that minutia later. And, For sure. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be scenarios where there's enough of a gap and you can flawless okay. block the second hit and then punish it. But not on a tight string. Right. It's a pretty slow chase down for Sonic Fox, as you can see. I mean, those buttons out of Raiden are, are big. Right. Yeah, very fast forward movement. Now, Sonic Fox has figured out, though, her onion rings are actually really, really, really good in this game. They recover really... It's kind of like Baraka, where they're surprisingly... You normally wouldn't think of her onion rings as being super, super strong, but they are yeah. great in this. Okay. And we saw briefly, I don't know if we've seen it actually connect, but Raiden has a huge anti-air, gigantic forward range on that. Oh, that shot's so good. <laughs> oh, man. Now, this really shows the Fatal Blow mechanic here because he has now made this comeback, but Sonic has now inflated Fatal Blow territory. Right. And she has an overhead and a low that can link into it, so Rewind could be an on ton of trouble if Sonic gets in. And Sonic got in. He might go for it. Keeping it safe, nope, it looks he's like. going for the pressure. Oh, oh there, he, he was. Was that a low? Yeah. That was a low, yeah. Yeah, Sonic's doing a really good job just kind of getting the mid-range, then blocking. Oh, big jump in. Okay, let's now see what let's he see got. Now Rewind tries to get out of the corner. Dang, look at the damage oh, already. Oh, the short hop! It's so impressive that these guys, I mean, that, these guys are EVO champions. They are already using a mechanic like that. Did you make combat out of the rings? Oh. Okay, but it, Re Rewind can't afford that right now. He's yeah. too low on life. And Rewind's just one, basically, throw or low, even in ship oh, damage was up on this, you can say, Okay. <laughs> okay, there he goes. <laughs> My favorite detail here is the intestine attached to the blade. Now, since we've been seeing a lot of projectiles, talk to me how the flawless block works against projectiles. Well, basically, it's exactly the same. If you block it, you know, at the last second, you're not going to take the chip damage. You're going to cover a lot faster. So. You could definitely use that if you're really getting zoned out to block one perfectly. And obviously, it'll be easier to, per to a flawless block a projectile since you see it's coming. Going back to the zoning game, again, we've seen a lot of this coming out of Raiden. And, you know, I just saw you asked for questions on Twitter and someone asked, are there brutalities? Yeah. Maybe? Okay. I don't know. That's something I would ask players here. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know the answer to that. They were definitely a cool feature in MKX. I hope they're back. Okay, okay. Some pressure now from Sonic Fox as he moves forward. Yeah, and Sonic Fox is definitely adjusted here after that first game. Oh, that mace is in play, though. Let's see oh, the interactable mace. mace. And remember, you can amplify an interactable to get armor. It's one of the few ways you can get armor in this game, so okay. it's pretty useful. Okay. Oh, that crushing oh, blow was really? probably killed. What was that? I believe that one is if you block the first, try to flawless block the second, and oh, you fail. I dude, believe. Wow, okay. That gets pretty like, involved. Don't huh? like mortgage your house on that, but I think that's what it is. Yeah. And yeah, and that did like a ton of damage. But that's a super sick condition. So you have an incentive to not try, exactly. I guess. Very cool. If, you know, if you're not exact with your timing. Oh, good anti air with the uppercut. Uppercuts are like really good in this game. Yeah, it seems like a lot of characters have great hitboxes on it. That was the beginning of Superman right there, which you can cancel, actually. Yes, you can actually delay the Superman. He kind of levitates, or you can cancel it. Now, you can't cancel it forever because it takes some of your stamina, but yeah. it's a pretty good fake out. For sure, yeah. yeah we'll Sonic, right. Sonic can steal this with Fatal Blow if he wants. Oh, nope. That was an anti -air? That anti -airs? Oh, that move just shuts you down. Like you're not. Wow! Through. You can't jump through. So I thought that the hitbox was at the bottom oh, of the screen, no, but it's the actual is... lightning. Now Raiden, it's not tracking. Raiden has to know close, medium, or far. But yeah, that's that's definitely a do not move, sir. Wow. And Sonic is really making hay with those rings. Oh, great tech. Mm -hmm. These guys are already teching each other's throws and, and playing patient in the mid range. 
Yeah, I really like watching Sonic just sort of move forward inexorably. It's not super fast each time, but you can see him consistently doing it. What are these two friends going to do when they're not playing this game every day until April? Like, this flight is going to be such an emo flight for them, because yeah. you know they're going to be hyped to play all day long. Ready for the tech and had the right angle on it. Oh, there and there you saw the Amplified Spear with the armor. Oh, that's a good damage. All he needs is chip. Sonic could easily... Oh, oh that hold could on! be a critical mistake. And Sonic's going to cash in that fatal blow. And well, why not? Be... If he takes one more hit of chip, he's done. Yeah. Wait, that even might just kill. No. Almost, almost. Oh, oh okay! Rewind out of there! I forgot about the teleport. Okay. This is the classic Sonic Fox Rewind set. Yeah. Uh, Rewind didn't forget about the teleport. He was ready with that. And that's one of those situations where I guess you just don't have any other options, right? Or actually, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly how much life he had, but if he had blocked that perfectly, if he'd done the flawless block, could he have survived Chip instead of... We'd have to look. I'm guessing he still would have died. I don't, okay. I don't remember exactly how much he had. So that doesn't avoid Chip death or It anything. doesn't avoid it completely or Chip death, but it does do significantly less. Okay. It, it really does matter. I just don't remember that. Like, I have to see that again. Okay, sure. Wow, they're both at even life. Very good use of Raiden's teleport, which I absolutely love the animation. This, this, the way he turns around into it is super cool. I was gonna say Rewind's hanging around by that mace, knowing an Amplify, but then he teleported away. Right, yeah. Oh, that's probably it. Nope, chooses not. not. Sonic chooses not to use the Fatal Blow there. That's Very right, he could have done it, huh? I guess maybe he wants to save it for the next game if he right. has a life. He must next be round, confident rather. he's going to win this round anyway, so we'll see right. if he does. What a cool decision you have to make. Uh, yeah, it's a very, very cool meta. And he did, so he yeah. was right. He was right. So now if he's in a bad spot, or if he could just seal the game, he'll still have he it. will do that. And yeah. since Rewind used it, but it was blocked, he'll have it again. It only, it only catches out if it actually hits. Got it. Very good zoning from these two. Do you know if that's advantage, that big moving forward kind of red punch? I don't know about I, don't, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> okay. Again, that slow move. Oh, oh that's that the anti I was talking about. Was oh sick. my god, the yeah, range that, on it is absurd. The lightning bolt is the hitbox, so yeah, you can you can even hit jump back. So Raiden is so good on the ground, and he can really mess you up for trying to jump. He seems really strong. Yeah, I think I think Raiden, I think this is the strongest iteration in a Many, many games, in my opinion. He's great. That's cool. I also really love, personally, how tall and huge he is. <laughs> yeah, he's cool looking, for sure. Like, this is a... In the MK1 lore, it actually is mentioned that he was extremely tall, and I don't think we've ever really shown how big he is. He is a big, big god. Oh, you did go for the low, and he... And Sonic's got it. All right, ties it up 2-2. Two -two. Going down to the end. I think this is exactly what we expected from these two players. Yeah. I, whoever wins, they're definitely going to hug. There's definitely going to be a hug. There's just no doubt there's going to be a hug. <laughs> and I think Sonic Fox actually has a cold, so he'll transfer that with the hug. Okay. To rewind. They could be sick together while tweeting about how sick and OD the game is. Really strong harassment by Sonic Fox, but now into the corner. Oh, oh, was it a counter? Great counter, yeah. That's, okay. That is her uh, custom variation move that she has on this slowdown. She has a high counter and a low counter. Wow, that damage was wild at the end right there. So it's match point for Sonic Fox. Let's see if Rewind chooses to zone it. Oh, teleports out the corner. Very smart. Oh, great Ooh. anti -air. That was an MK9 style anti that, that was good. That didn't seem like a cancel either. That just looked like a link. Sonic's in a lot of trouble. Is Sonic going to lose his first set? Is Sonic going to start his 11 career? Ooh, the jam! Oh my god, it killed! All right, here we go. Last round. We'll see if Sonic can clutch this out with a K. Yeah, there he goes. The confirm from Rewind. He's got the corner. Oh, that'll be a combo. You can actually mash two oh, and keep wow. that going, but Sonic's not doing it. He may want the re or he just doesn't know because it's early. That is so good. 
That light, that angle that that thing takes. Sonic just inching his way in. We want doing a great job with the zoning. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little panic on the teleport though. Confirmed properly. And back to trying for the zoning game. The Sonic Fox is a big threat. Oh, oh wow, that was a precarious, precarious jump. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna end it with some brawling here. Fanable's there. That was just in the flight to get it too. Great situation right now in terms of that resource for Rewind. That was a very risky break. Yeah, he was certain though. You know Rewind wants to hit that trigger because it will kill at this point probably. He might not. But, oh, he might not get the opportunity. There still is the break. I don't know that we've even talked oh, about that. No, it doesn't the come up. The didn't come out in time. It was just a few frames away from beat. Sonic Fox literally probably three frames or so from losing this exhibition. Well, that was a great set. That's exactly what we want from these two guys. That was super close. Here's a hot take for you. We're going to see this in many grand finals to come. Well, let's go back up to Josh, who has a word with Sonic Fox. Well, that was one hell of a series, but we have a request from chat. They want to see one more match. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for Tweety! This will be our final pro exhibition. Tweety will be facing off against Sonic Fox. Any words before we start? Uh, I'm gonna try to mob, but that mix looks kinda good, bro. <laughs> it's a good mix. Go and take a seat, we'll get you down to the button checks. That was quite a series against Rewind, but Sonic Fox, you're gonna try to hold the title once again up here. Are you folks having a good time? We saw a lot of great gameplay. We saw a lot of great surprises. This is going to be the final piece of our live broadcast. We thank everybody for tuning in. We still got a little bit more left to go as we showcase Mortal Kombat 11. Tweety is going to get his lucky controller connected and jump into the button checks. Sonic Fox is going to check the mix up and get ready himself. Let's see, he's going to choose the same character and what Tweety is going to bring to the mix. Here we go, back into the menus. And to the character select screen. Once again, these players will have time to check their inputs, make sure they're... Ooh, Tweety's gonna double check something here. Need some help from Aquaman here. Thank you, Mr. Aquaman. So far, we've seen Baraka, Sonya Blade, seen some Scorpion. I don't think we've seen any Sub-Zero yet. We've seen Raiden, we've seen some Scarlet, we've seen some Garrus. I'd love to hear from you online, social media, which characters are you most excited to see so far in Mortal Kombat 11? Always great to see you. You bring so much passion to your competitions. How excited are you to be here, Gur? Very excited. I'm happy to see everybody, see all these new characters, new game. Just super stoked to be here. Very happy moment. I'm gonna... Make the most of it. All right, go and have a seat and get ready. Let's introduce your competitor from Texas, currently a free agent, Scar. One question, Scar. Sonia or Scarlet? Scarlet. That's what I want to hear. Go ahead and take a seat, folks. We're going to see this fan favorite from Mortal Kombat 9 make a return with one of the best players on the planet. We'll give these players a second to double check their button checks, see what they need to do in order to maximize their potential in this game. And remember, they've only had a couple hours playing this game, but it shows how long they have spent playing previous Nether Round titles to pick up the intricate differences we see in the gameplay compared to Mortal Kombat X. We'll give them a couple more minutes here as they flip through the menu and set themselves up for success. Gur, are you ready? Gur is ready. Scar, are you ready? Let's do it. Gentlemen, match number two about to begin. Now this one's exciting for me. Well, I'm really look looking forward to Scarlet. I mean, oh, she's I back, but she's... Very different. She might as well be a brand new character. I, and I am all in on MK11 Scarlet. I think she looks yes. amazing all and right. plays so amazing. I'm talking about enough about Scarlet. Let's talk about this dude right here. So uh, you immediately gravitated toward this character. You should probably tell everyone why, because he's very unique. There's no doubt about it, yeah. So obviously he's the grappler. 
Uh, by the way, some other characters have that too. It's not just him, but Baraka yeah, he, he also does, does have a command grab. He does have a command grab. So, so Garrus has uh, a really strong command grab that goes really far. Corner carry is excellent. He has some good buttons, and man, some of his there is the command grab. And you see how long he holds you. It, it has the unique property where if he's near a wall, he then makes a sand wall and throws you into it. It does a lot more damage when right. that happens as well. He has a uh, little kind of atrocitous sort of semi zoning, as you saw right there. Uh, he also has some crazy stuff in the variations, and I'm not sure which ones he ended up with here, but he's got some real nutty tools, let me he, tell you. He has a rewind time move. He has a move where he can actually remove time from the clock. He is a very unique... He's, it's very... He's like a hybrid character of a weird kind of trap character, and then with the command grab. Yes. Yeah, very, very funky design. But these buttons right now out of Scarlet, the range is incredible. Scarlet is the footsie's queen, the mid-range queen, in my opinion. She has... She uses blood to conjure weapons, and... They all have excellent range. Oh, hold on. Has. Hold on here. Multiple projectors. And there's, there's the Fatal Blow. So when you're down below a certain percentage of life, you get access to the Fatal Blow. Yes. And it is a huge amount of damage, as you can see. Round winning damage. It is big damage, and they have armor. And armor's not as prevalent as it has been in previous games. You really kind of have to use your uh, mid range to just avoid stuff. So the Fatal Blow is going to be one of the best ways to have armor. It is not tied to your stamina bar at all, right? which means you don't have to use your resources. In previous games, you'd have to give up all your resources to do an X-ray attack. Now with Fatal Blow, you're free to use it if you have 30%, which just inherently makes them so much more powerful. Sure. Yeah, you'll, you'll get it every game, every the, round. The catch is once it hits, you can't use it again. So one of the meta of the game is going to be decide, do you want to make a comeback in round one like we just saw? Gur will never have his Fatal Blow again now that he's used Oh, in the whole game! In the whole game. Oh, I thought it was rounds. Wow. That is really big. So they are absolute game changers that are extremely strong, but you only get the one cash in. That was his command grab. Same one, it's just and at the wall, right. like Bit was saying, it's a little bit different. And he can hold the, the button to throw them even further, like carry them even further. Oh, now the fatal blow's there for Scar. And that's the crushing blow. That oh did my god, look at the of, damage! So the way that one works is, the last hits an overhead of the string. If you duck block, you get the crushing blow. He also has a low where he does sand trap. So it's a 50-50. If they think you're gonna do the, the low sand move, they duck, and if they get hit by that overhead, they lose 40% of their life because of the crushing blow. You're telling me his mix-up. His mix-up has a crushing blow on it. <laughs> but okay, like Fatal Blow, he character. only can use that once per game. Right. So that's one of the fun things about crushing blows. Do you, do you want to go for that mix-up now or later? I see, okay. And we'll see, uh, Gur basically made a crushing blow and a fatal blow comeback right yeah. there out of nowhere. They do, they do massive damage. Yeah, you can really see that. I guess as the opponent, you really got to pay attention. Combos in general in this game are significantly shorter than they've been in the past, and they do less damage. And they kind of, that damage you would get by doing the cinematic moves. Yo, did you see that combo this guy already has? What, what, what do we say, two hours of gameplay yeah. so far? So one of the big things would be to use your Crushing Blow or your Fatal Blow to get damage instead of doing combos. That's not, that's not to say combos are not still a big part of the game, yeah. but they're going to be somewhat less prevalent. Like, there's less moves that uh, combo without using an amplified move, or there's less strings that pop you up. It's going to be more about doing big damage in big, big chunks. Okay, here we go. Can you get in there in time? now? Yeah, and Scarlet, she has like four different projectiles, so... Yeah, and if you're Scarlet, really there's no much reason to do anything else. just holding on to the space right here. But gotta pay attention to that Fatal. Oh, okay. Oh. Fatal Blow was available. Didn't end up coming up. Scarlet is a good example of how the offense works in this game. Her back two is that scythe move that's an overhead, but it does not pop you up, and it is unsafe if blocked. Okay. But then her back three four, that one, that can pop you up in the corner. So she has a low that can pop you up, but she does not have an overhead. Uh-huh. Oh, he's really found a good tool. Oh, good jump. Probably looking for a command grab. Didn't come. And Scar right back to the zoning. You can see, look, the, the frustration is still here. One of the things I really love about MK11 so far is that these characters that you've shown on this character select screen are very different. So you have the credible zoning coming out of Scarlet. From Garrus, you have really cool command grab mix-ups. Uh, he's got some other funky stuff as well that like we were talking about. Really good variations. Fatal Blow, it's there. 
Yes, and then you'll also have characters like Sub Zero who has great off, some of the best offense in this version, which is unique. Sub Zero typically you think of him as a very slow defensive character. I really don't think he is in this one. He's quite different, yeah. And Sonya also has really, really good mix-ups. <laughs> you know, Gur always had a lot of heart as a player. <laughs> Looking pretty confident up there, and I'm really glad that Gurr went with the big body. You know, he in Injustice 2, as the game progressed, he moved away from Bane and the command grab characters he traditionally used. So I'm happy to see him back. Yeah, I was very happy when I, I went but back there that he immediately had picked Gears. It really seems good for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very hyped to see Scar play uh, Scarlet. One of the fun things about the development of this game, since we didn't reveal it, you know, earlier was sitting there waiting. I can't wait to see some of these, you know, which pro player is going to play which this character. And I knew Scar was going to lose his mind because in MK9, he came in late and he was the best Scarlet in the world at one point. But Injustice came out and he never really got the chance to like get an right. Evo top eight or an MLG top eight, even though he was very talented even back then. So at the beginning of this round, we saw that it said first hit. What does that do for you now without meter in the same way? There is way? no more like first hit bonus. You, you, okay. you do not get anything because meter recharges on its own. And you always, unlike typically, you do not, you actually start with all four of your bars. Oh, dang, the combo out of the way, though? All right. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, that could have been cool. <laughs> He'll get there. He'll get now, there. Gur does have his fatal blow. We'll see, though. Now, at this point, though, the round is going to be very hard to win, so it might be wiser to save it unless he gets a few hits in and then it would kill. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, wow. Just goes for the sweep to seal it. Yeah, I really like the mind game of that, having to think even as the person using the tool, if you should use it now or you should save it for the next round it's, or what? It's definitely one of my favorite things that we've added to the game. Oh, wow. What's the condition on that? The condition on that, I believe, is two counter hits with that move in a row. Okay, I was going to ask what counter hits do, but I guess, do they they help with that? Counter hits are typically used in crushing blows, otherwise they just it just lets you know that you hit a counter hit, but a lot right. of them are tied to that. Okay, yeah. And that's the same when you see punish come up, that it was a guaranteed punish, and a lot of those are crushing blows. Like, for example, that right there, if that had hit as a counter, it would have got the crushing blow. Got it. Look how long he holds it! We see that? He's holding them like they're a small child. Yeah, they are compared to that big boy. And right back to a range where he can control things. He's got good buttons. Maybe not in this matchup, but typically it seems right. like that's true. Okay, oh, that okay, here it is. Excellent use of the fatal blow. He was about to lose, if not. Right. And that's definitely going to kill. Now, again, that means Gerd did steal that round, but he will not have it in the final round, and Scar still has his. So that means in the end of game scenario, like right there, Scar will have a huge advantage heading into this final round. Hoping to see some forward movement in there. Now those, those um, I'm not sure what to call it. It's not puddle, that thing. You have to aim that, right? That is not yes. tracking. It is not tracking. He has close, medium, and very far. And you can see when he amplifies it is when he gets the hourglass and it's letting you know the other one's going to come out. So you can see what he's Gurr's kind of doing. You put it out there, then do other moves, walk in, walk back, and then it's going to go. And Scar knows you can't get in. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking about whether Gar, uh, Gur could make another comeback. It doesn't seem like he needs it right now. It's all on Scar. Now Scar does have access to the fatal blow. Oh, oh. now it is on a cooldown. He did not lose it since it was blocked, but it's okay. a significant cooldown. Still available. Woo! And it just came back. Unfortunately, it's too late. So then you do have access to it more if than once. If it's blocked or whipped. Okay. Once it actually connects, it's used. Okay. Wow. Now, we've only seen it pop up a couple of times, but talk to me about how throws and throw techs work. Are they the same as in previous Mortal Kombat? Throws are very reminiscent of MKX and okay. MK9. You use the opposite button to break them. They have a forward and a back one. A lot of crushing blows are actually tied to throw, and the requirement will be if the opponent techs the wrong way, you get the crushing blow, and they do bigly damage. Like, Scarlet has one, so her throw can do like 30% if you tech wrong. Oh, sick, okay. It's pretty awesome. So as the defender, almost riskier to try to tech in some situations. Well, 
That's exactly it. And you could actually, if you think they're going to throw, do an uppercut, because that would trigger the counter-hitting high attack for the uppercut-crushing blow. Wow, all right. So it kind of works both ways, actually, of how risky throws can be. Interesting. Oh, he had gone for the interactable. You can still amplify uh, interactables to get armor. It's one of the few ways that has armor in the game. Okay. However, normally an interactable takes 50% of your defense. If you amplify it to get armor, it takes 50% of offense and defense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Armor across the board is significantly uh, lessened than it was in, in previous games. A lot of characters only have armor on their fatal blow or a, a handful of moves. So they're both finding pretty good strings right now and making the opponent block a lot. Is there anything that they could be doing about that? Yes, one of the new mechanics is Flawless Block. It's if you block an attack at the last second within just a couple of frames, chip damage is significantly reduced and you actually break out earlier and it allows you to punish things or recover faster than you normally would. Okay. It's a very hard mechanic. Uh, it's, it's meant to be kind of, you really have mastered the timing and you really know your opponent well, but it can save your life. Like, if you're about to die by chip damage, it can save you. You also, if you reversal a move in Flawless Block, you have access to your wake-up attacks. So the up two or the up three that uses your wake-up attacks, you can do as a reversal. So I'll give you an example. Oh, after blocking. Right. Like if you do Sub-Zero Slide and I block it, if I flawless block, I can then reversal up two and get the pop-up attack. Oh, so, wow. Like a great example would be Scorpion's Enhanced Teleport is safe on block. However, if I have the timing, if I've mastered, if I have Sonic Fox-like reflexes, I can flawless block the teleport and I can actually get a punish when normally <laughs> I cannot. Okay. And this is like basically a dead even match. They're both playing their characters pretty impressive for how little time they've had. Yeah, I feel like they are developing even as we're watching them right now. We're seeing some cooler pressure out of both. Yeah, they're both mixing up their zoning well, and you pointed it out earlier, like they're, they understand their block strings up close. Okay, oh, wait, there you go. So that was the up three one where she, she doesn't really get significant damage or a knockdown. It's just more of a get off me tool. And is that safe? Uh, it depends on the character. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sick. <laughs> okay. Oh, and there he went for his uh, temporal advantage move, which is interesting because while it combos, he freezes time, he cannot two and one into it. Mm. It also takes one of his stamina it bars. It does, right. There are certain moves or, or cancels that'll take stamina. So it's not like he needs to enhance it, it just does that. It just does that, which is, that's okay. why two and one. God, that was an anti-air, jeez. And the way that move works is the opponent is frozen and doesn't do a reaction. So obviously, typically, an uppercut would knock you away. That won't. And they are both within Fatal Blow. So this is the scramble I'm so excited for in tournaments. Oh, we saw Scar try it, but it was blocked. And now he's at match point. Grr, patient right there. I like the anti-air. Wow, we teched it. Scar's getting a big combo. Now, there is a wall run interactable here that Gurr could use, and Gurr has never done a wall, seen a wall run that he hasn't used. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Gurr is definitely probably the interactable master in the scene. Yeah, known to, to be one of those. And, there you go. Okay, yeah, armor. The tongue not connecting. And that tongue is a really, really good move. It has really good recovery. It's That's my favorite of rezoning tools. Mm. Looking good for Scar. We got Fatal Blow now for Gurr, though. Oh. He tried. He tried. The armor does not activate for a few frames. Okay. So while it's very good armor and it's a good tool to have, it's not foolproof. Oh, uh, that might be about it. Yeah. That's going to be it. Scar takes it. Well, that's a really good back and forth. And I, and I love seeing the display of footsies from both. I like seeing the different offense, the different timings. Very cool. I'm really excited to find out more about, um, you know, how, how you trigger crushing blows. I think that's a super cool mechanic. That is something, along with the blocking option that you were talking about, that really requires knowing the game in depth. Yes, crushing blows are, are definitely a lot of fun to learn the requirements. And I've now seen them probably 8 million times. And I'm still high, like every time. Who has a word with Sonic Fox? Well, that was one hell of a series, but we have a request from chat they want to see one more match ladies and gentlemen let's hear it one more time for tweety this will be our final pro exhibition tweety will be facing off against sonic fox any words before we start 
Uh, I'm gonna try to mop, but that mix looks kind of good, bro. <laughs> it's a good mix. Go ahead and take a seat. We'll get you down to the button checks. That was quite a series against Rewind, but Sonic Fox, you're gonna try to hold the title once again up here. Are you folks having a good time? We saw a lot of great gameplay. We saw a lot of great surprises. This is gonna be the final piece of our live broadcast. We thank everybody for tuning in. We still got a little bit more left to go as we showcase Mortal Kombat 11. Tweety is gonna get his lucky controller connected and jump into the button checks. Sonic Fox is gonna check the mix up and get ready himself. Let's see, he's gonna choose the same character and what Tweety is going to bring to the mix. Here we go back into the menus. And to the character select screen, once again, these players will have time to check their inputs, make sure they're... Ooh, Tweety's gonna double check something here. Need some help from Aquaman here. Thank you, Mr. Aquaman. So far, we've seen Baraka, Sonya Blade, seen some Scorpion. I don't think we've seen any Sub-Zero yet. We've seen Raiden, we've seen some Scarlet, we've seen some Garrus. I'd love to hear from you online, social media, which characters are you most excited to see so far in Mortal Kombat 11? Right, looks like we have the connection. Tweety is sitting down. And he's in the menu. Double checking the connection one more time. Oh, looks like we're gonna go into the main menu. All right, we're gonna give Tweety a couple more moments here to get his controller set up. Sonic Fox, I'm gonna ask you real quick, how close was that rewind matchup for you? Oh, that was pretty close. He just, if you didn't notice, he tried to fatal blow me. And if I got hit by that, I would have died. So I definitely, I don't think fatal blows are armored, but I think they're quick. Uh, so what I, tried to, uh, what I did was check him, just in case he tried to fatal blow me, I killed him. Yes. And why I have you here, what are your thoughts on the fatal blows compared to the X-ray system that we saw in previous Mortal Kombat games? Um, they're definitely a lot more useful now. Like, it made me not want to use X-rays in the last game because like, almost most of them were useless and the meaning was more important. But, like now that that system exists, it's like that's a big chunk of damage. And do you think there's going to be a lot of strategy for players going in where they want to use the fatal blow in the first round or save it for the second round and trying to find out when is the best way to use it? I think the best way to use the fatal blow is if it's going to secure you the game, especially if you're making a full life comeback. Well, Sonic, thanks for your thoughts. We're going to give Tweety a couple more moments here. Let me kick it over to the commentators. We get this final matchup underway. Now, Josh said that we haven't seen Sub-Zero yet. Yes. Um, I saw a little bit of Sub-Zero in the back, but talk to me about how he is. Is he much different? Yeah, he almost is a weapons fighter in this game. He uses his eye, he uses ice swords and ice axes in a ton of his normal attacks. He has great range, good mix-ups. He has a low that can combo, an overhead that can combo. The overhead is unsafe, but still, very, very good. I heard that he doesn't have a move that he often has had in the past that has figured quite prominently in his game plan. Ice clone's gone. There's no ice clone. There is no ice clone. Somewhere on the East Coast, <laughs> yeah. there is a certain player who has just died. It's frustrating. <laughs> he actually does have a new move, though, <laughs> that functions kind of similarly that you can check yeah, out, yeah, the people yeah. here will check out. He has an yeah. ice orb move that's very, very cool looking. Right. It, it, it seems to have a similar idea, maybe not the same function, because you can attack under it, right. and you can jump over a little bit more easily. And that's one of his custom variation moves. So if right. you want to make a defensive, heavily playstyle one, you can. Other than uh, that move, I think he has a lot of, he has, actually has a lot of zoning moves in this. He has multiple different projectiles he can use. He's very, very different. And I think he's very cool. I've always liked Sub-Zero, and I, I love playing him in this game. I feel like I've rarely been interested in him, but I, I really like some of the changes in him. More of a projectile character, it's cool. So Tweety, of course, going back to the Baraka. It makes a lot of sense. He did really, really well. Uh-huh. 
Now this is a... This oh, that was because... Was she going for a throw? She was going for either a jab or a throw. Okay, right? so that because that was a an uppercut to beat a high attack, yep, you get the you crushing, got the crushing blow. blow. And usually with an uppercut, you just get a knockdown. Off the crushing blow, you get a full combo. So, you know, I said earlier that combos aren't as extensive as they used to be. Using that crushing blow, you're actually going to get like 40, even up to 50% if you use the crushing blow. Wow, okay. But once per game, so you've got to really make it count. Tried to get the second one. I think maybe if he hadn't enhanced that, he might have been able to recover in time, but took and the Sonic risk. going for the restand. And so far, we haven't seen a lot of zoning. They're just going ham. They're just going in. Yeah, even Tweety hasn't really been zoning. He hasn't had that many chances. We'll this see if that comes up. This corner of the stage up. actually has two different interactables. Oh, wake up forward roll. How about that? Okay, so as an escape, not just a defensive sort of moving backwards tool, but to get out right, of the to corner. To get out even. of the corner, right. Yeah, I think the wake up roll is very, very strong. And as you were saying before, that's invincible to hits, but can be grabbed. It can be grabbed, yes. And that includes command grabs. Like, Baraka's command grab okay. actually beats it, and that is the crushing glow required. Okay. Yeah, these guys are, like, on each other like glue. Like, they're the opposite zoning. Right. Okay, yeah, there's the wake up. Getting a little juggle out of it. Fatal Blow's ready. Sonic Fox mentioned he thought that... Oh, okay! That's it. that's it. Wow. As an anti-air juggle from across the screen, all that damage. That is crazy. So much damage. The Sonic mentioned that crushing, or uh, sorry, Fatal Blow doesn't have armor. That that, is that's actually what he said. Correct. It's, okay. it's that the armor doesn't start up immediately. Okay. You have to wait a little bit. But he is right that they're very, very fast. The, the N2 attacks that lead to a Fatal Blow are very, very strong. You can see it looks like Tweety's trying to find some ways to back up, get back, start the zoning again. Right. It's been hard for him. Oh, good preemptive jump attack. That's Injustice Fundamentals right there. And I love that Baraka has the classic MK2 drop kick. Yeah. That's exactly that Randy Orton, Bob Holly drop kick. But jump attacks do work a little bit differently. For example, neutral jump punches don't launch in the way that they've done in the last couple of games. Yes, they now are the same. Scorpion actually has a variation move he can equip that gives him the old school like volleyball bounce thing if he wants. Oh, it didn't kill. Oh, yeah, so good Sonic knew it. Sonic, Sonic knew yeah, it. Very good block from Sonic. Really could have used the flawless block, I guess. <laughs> As he's now, caught in the corner. Greedy can actually wall run off that dirty Ooh. mattress. Nope, he's not gonna have to. I like it rolls away. Man, this is relentless right now. Sonic Fox is making everything happen. Okay, yep. Didn't expect a second hit. Oh, it's just the kick though, so no bigger combo out of it. Now we see the zoning. Now Tweety isn't doing exactly what he wanted to do. And yeah. Sonic's going to be in a lot of trouble. So For sure. Yeah. Her range isn't the best, so she's gonna have to either do her projectile back or kind of inch her way in. Well, Luckily, here we go. she's got a knockdown. Out of there! Very smart of Tweety. Again, injustice fundamentals there, using that wall run to get out of dodge. Chip! No! Oh, oh! He tried to go it's in! A, I said it an hour ago, no one has ever punished Chop Chop ever in 30 years! Well, you can keep it up. It's tricky. It is. You you see, everyone says, oh, Chop Chop's it's a bad, you just punish it, it's bad, and then no one does. Oh, wow. Wow. Great wow. Scoop. That Baraka back forward two move is so quick. It's punishable, but that scoop is very, very fast. That's mm -hmm. kind of like his MK9 blade charge, but significantly better. Man, that jump kick has really been causing Sonic Fox problems. You see him trying to anti-air it a couple of times. They've both failed. Oh, wow. Excellent whip punish from Sonic. He goes for the restand and goes for another mix-up. Both are in Fatal Blow. Here he's can scramble. Tried it, but again, because it was blocked, he still has it again. Yes, he Just... will have it on a cool... You'll see when it comes out, and that's nope, it. Never that mind. Back. Not that it matters, but Sonic's going to be up 2-0. Very close games, though. Tweety's holding his own. Oh, yeah. I think Tweety needs to call in air support and get Starfire in here. Yeah, even though that projectile is a mid, the way that Sonic Fox moves through it is so practiced seemingly. You know, it's like he's already had experience there. What's scaring me right now is Sonic doesn't have his paws and he's still OD. <laughs> like this isn't even his full form. He literally doesn't have his hands and he's still beating people. 
And they're both going all in again. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody really knows what is advantaged or not right now, right? That four, two, that, or, sorry, that 4-4, four, four, that Sonya D move is definitely one of her better mids. It's so fast, and it's it's awesome to see Sonic. That said punish. Yeah, already has figured out some, you know, some of her great close-range moves, even with just this limited amount of time. Yeah. Wow, look at this. This is a clinic right now by then Sonic Fox. he finishes Fox. it off. He, oh my god, look at that. No look at that. This is, I mean, it's reminding me of yeah, the last time a Mortal Kombat game came out and Sonic knew the game instantly, I mean, yeah, right? Right, like the way he's using back one is, is, is just exactly what you want to do with her. Like, he basically figured out Sonya's fundamentals in, in like four minutes. Right. He's He just thinks so fast. We'll see though, Tweety has made these games competitive, so... Yeah, he's not getting, or hasn't been getting smoked, although you might say this game's oh, a smoke. Excellent roll. Sonic's gonna reverse it and Tweety's in a ton of trouble here. Yeah, Let's that roll was okay, but okay, here he goes. Got him. Now Sonic might be in fatable territory himself right now, or it's gonna be very close. Very, not, very close. Not quite, but still, if he finds the right hit, it's over. And, and he it. did, and Sonic Fox ends up taking it in a sweet 3 to 0. I think Sonic just lets Tweety know, look, bud, this is MK. And when it comes to Mortal Kombat, I am the champ. I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed seeing the different styles that we saw among the characters. We saw that it was a slow, kind of patient offense, mix-ups up close from Sonya. We saw very strong zoning out of a couple of the characters. Scarlet, Baraka. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, we saw some cool command grab uh, mix-ups as well as some time-freezing stuff out of Karis.